All right, guys, let's see if you can see it. What's wrong with this picture? You don't see it yet? Look at this. These are all 63, 62, 66, 63, 84. But look at the watts. 13, 113, 128, 182, 188. Right? That means there's two 3080s in here. The problem is they're running 66 mega hashes and 84 mega hashes and 188 watts and 182 watts. These 30, 3080s usually run at 100 mega hashes. So something definitely wrong with this. I'm gonna start with this Dell 3080 here. And I know that the Dell ones, the OEMs are actually terrible, but we might have to be changing some thermal pads because the core, like the temps aren't bad, but I can't see the VRAM since they're NVIDIA here. But I think that the thermal pads need to be changed or upgraded or something. So we're gonna look for those thermal pads and we're, we're gonna take this this rig, this one apart, the one that's doing worse, and then see if we can get an improvement. All right, everybody, so here's the card. I know what you're thinking, it is dirty. Um, I am aware of that, it's just I kind of uh, didn't get a chance to clean it yet, and you know, I let some pollen in the room on accident. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna first clean it now, so yeah. Okay, so. I actually got this card a long time ago from a graveyard pile that was going to either get tossed or recycled. I ended up testing the, the card itself and the card itself I could not game on, but I figured out that I could actually mine on this thing. Um, I plugged it into one of my rigs and I never looked at it again. I, kind of, uh, I, I noticed it was hot, but I kind of was like, I'm going to get around to it eventually. It's now been like six months and I still haven't gotten around to it. but. We're gonna get to that today. Now, I did order the thermal pads for this to try that out, but I also uh, was reading that just by adding a little bit of thermal paste in between like the heat sink and, and one of the plates that's on here should also work. Um, but we're gonna get started with at least cleaning it off first, uh, cause this is really dirty. That is another reason why I could be overheating. Um, and it's really dirty. We're gonna wipe it down. We're gonna get all the dust and everything off of it. Um, but there is another issue that I did notice. Um, I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna close up on on, on this one so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, okay. So I don't know if it's gonna catch it really well on camera. I'm trying to use my studio lights here for this. But there's a thermal pad right there. But as you can see, there's a gap in that thermal pad. There's also like a weird bulge going on across here. Um, and again, you might not be able to see it great on camera, but there is also a thermal pad right here that doesn't seem to have any contact uh, with anything. It's just kind of just stuck to this top plate, but it's not contacting the board. So I, I this kind of looks warped to me. I don't know. Yeah, see, see how there's like a kind of like a like a like a bump. It kind of looks warped. Um, so that's another thing. Uh, we might have to like bend this back down to try to uh, to see if we can get that contact in there. As far as I know, this card is still stock and nobody worked on it. Of course, you know, somebody could have opened it. Um, but that could also be an issue of why it's uh, overheating because those thermal pads aren't actually directly above the, uh, the VRAM. So, yeah, let's, let's take this apart, clean it off, and then we'll try to bend this back plate back straight and also apply the thermal paste uh, of where I was talking about before. And you'll see that when we actually open it. And hopefully with that, we can get it to stop overheating and I might not have to change the thermal pads after all. And I can save those for like another card because I do have another 3080 that's overheating that might actually need the thermal pads. So yeah, all right, let's get started. All right guys, so let's get started. Um, so in case I haven't said it, I actually recently moved into a new home. So I haven't quite gotten um, situated yet. So I haven't really been able to film anything or record anything as you guys can see from um, the background it, it was it was it's pretty much unfinished or well finished walls but unfinished um, drywall where it's not all, all done and ready to do I mean I'm trying to build a new studio it's where I can record but it's taken a lot longer than I thought it was so um, hopefully I can start recording more often like I used to um, anyways let's take all these screws off
and set these over here in the same order that they came out of. Hopefully I remember it. And take this off here. It's always a good idea to um, use a tray, but I don't actually have one right now, or I don't know where it is. Uh, so we're just gonna do this old school. We're just gonna put it aside, try to keep it in the same order, and that way we know how to put it back together afterwards. All right, so we can already tell that there's barely any contact on the one I was talking about and barely any contact on this one too. So this is the, these are the two that were kind of hovering. Um, and it looks like these are, DK kind of have contact and on the sides. Um, but yeah, we'll have to try to make this work a little bit better. And for that, I mean, we might, we might be able to just bend it back a little bit. If that doesn't work, then we'll have to replace all this thermal pads for thicker ones. Um, so we can actually make full contact. Let's take off these four screws here so we can take off the front. And those are all the same, so I'll leave those there. And usually there's a warranty sticker on these, on, on graphics cards on one of these screws, so maybe somebody actually does, has worked on this before. They were probably trying to figure out what was wrong with it. Um, as I, myself, physically, I could not tell, I could not tell what was wrong with it. What am I missing here? Um, is it these? It might be these these screws back here. All right. Opens up just like a little book. Oh, screws in the way. Opens up just like a little book. Um, we're gonna take these two plugs off, one, two. And what I was talking about um, that I was reading is that somebody added thermal paste on this area here. Um, so, so that way the contact from this plate actually has, has some kind of thermal conductivity on these sides. Now there are some stickers on here. Um, they're product numbers, I guess. I don't want to remove those. So, yeah, I guess I'll try to just add thermal paste on top of it. I don't know how good that's going to be. It's probably not going to be good. Uh, but uh, I really don't want to remove those stickers. If I have to remove them, I will. But we're going to try it just as is. So I am going to take this front plate off because um, I did notice that there's actually a lot of dust on the other side. no other screws is there I don't see any other screws so this could just be there it is okay so it's the thermal pads are holding it in I see oh no thermal pads are broken hmm well, only one broke but I'm just gonna I'm not gonna move them because I'm gonna put them right back to where they, right back where they were Wow, that is a big thermal pad for just one chip. <laughs> they used the whole thing for one chip. All right, so dust-wise, I was able to just use my compressor and got most of the dust off. There's a couple little areas here that I couldn't get off. Uh, we're gonna use isopropyl alcohol for that. Um, but everything else, even the dust that was attached to the uh, to these uh, thermal pads, that's gone. Well, there's a little bit still here, but um, the only thing I could not get off with the uh, with the compressor was the gunk off the fan. So all of that's gonna have to be cleaned off with a rag with isopropyl alcohol. So let's go ahead and quickly run through that real quick. And I'm also gonna clean off the, the old thermal paste. We're gonna add some Arctic Silver to this and hopefully that also helps. So yeah, um, I don't know if you guys can see it now, but um, the this thing is so warped. It's either the board that's warped or the actual plate that thermal pads aren't making any contact. You see that gap? Even if I press down on it, still no contact. So I think that we're still gonna need uh, 
thermal pads that are a little bit more thick, a little bit thicker for these two areas. So those might still have to be changed, but um, it's clean now. So let's at least put the other pieces together and maybe just maybe we can see some kind of difference um, once we get it back together. I'll again try to try to fix this out, but I'm pretty sure the board itself is also worked. It has like a slight, slight curve to it. But either way, let's put it back together um, and get some thermal paste on these things here so we can have contact with the, uh, with the, with the metal plate on the other side. Okay, so I was kind of thinking to myself how I was going to end up doing this. Um, I'm actually just going to put thermal paste on the chip and then a little bit, a line of thermal paste on each side of these. I hope this works because I definitely don't want this to be a waste of thermal paste. So we're just going to put a dab of thermal paste on there. Um, we're going to do a dab, of, a little bit of thermal paste on here. A little bit of thermal paste on this side. And just in case, we'll do <laughs> we'll do a dab of thermal paste on each one of these. Oh god, I got it everywhere. I'm going to plug these back in. It's back on. There's still a slight gap on this side. That definitely needs a thermal pad, a thicker thermal pad. There's no there's no getting around it. Um there's also a gap on this one as well. So just these two are working. Um, so yeah, once, hopefully once the thermal pads come in tomorrow, I'll be able to uh, change those out and I hope that I order thicker than these. All right, so a bit of an oversight on my part. Uh, I was trying to bend the whole plate when in reality I could have just pushed in on these tabs. I think that's why they're, they're just tabs. So you can push them in just like that and bend them inward so it does have contact. So slow part, slow moment on my part. I should have just done this from the start and this should lower the gap um, and help out a bit. I'm gonna do it on all of them just so they all have good contact. All right, guys, I got some good news. <laughs> Look at that. It's the top 3080 we just worked on right here. See that? 99.24 mega hashes. Look at that. It's good. It's hashing fully now. I'm so glad. I'm so glad it's hashing fully. Okay, also check this out. Remember, this is the one we just worked on. It's still holding at 99.26. It's been a few minutes now, okay? This is the one we haven't worked on. This one, this one wasn't actually as bad before, um, but look at this: core temperature 54, core temperature 57. But the one we just worked on, still holding a 99.26. The one that we haven't worked on that that wasn't as bad as the first one, dropped to 92.88 mega hashes, and it has the core temperature lower. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. I just refreshed again. 57. So this one has higher core temperature now. It's slightly higher, but it's but the VRAM is doing great. Um, so we're gonna have to do the same thing to the to the to the other one at the bottom now that we know the the first top modification worked. All right. So I cannot believe that actually worked so beautifully. I don't need the thermal pads for the Dell RTX 3080. It was literally just those two modifications. Now the reason this happens is because now you're 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 conducting more heat to the heat sink that's supposed to be cooling off the core. Uh, the good thing is though, for like, for at least for Ethereum, for example, we don't use the core as much as we use the VRAM for the graphics card, so we actually need the VRAM to be cooler than, and I'm not too worried about the core. Uh, three degrees here and there is not too much. Um, it's not too bad. 
as we saw for the other one, the other one started dropping, dropping in hash rate, at, but the core was a little cooler, meaning that the VRAM was actually heating up some more. So I'm definitely gonna do the exact same thing to the other card. Um, the other one wasn't as bad as this one because I am pretty sure the contact on the back uh, plate is there, not like the one we just worked on where it, there was actually a little gap. But, oh my God, if this was helpful to anybody, just uh, you go ahead and try it. Obviously, it's probably gonna void your warranty. I, mine, I'm pretty sure it was voided anyways because, I, like I said, I found it in a, in a graveyard pile. So, um, it is what it is. It definitely had been worked on before. I did upgrade to the um, Arctic Silver uh, Thermal Paste. So, this is really good to actually use good, good thermal paste. Um, so, I'm not going to change the thermal pads once they come in. I'm going to save those for a completely different card. I have an RTX 3080 uh, MSI Ventus that I need to work on because that's also overheating. Uh, but that one's a brand new card, and uh, I don't think it's worth in, in any way. So I think that's actually a thermal pad thing. So, anyways, guys, I'm I'll try to post again like I used to. Um, thanks for being here and watching this video. I hope this is helpful to somebody out there with an Alienware computer with an, with a Dell 3080, an OEM Dell 3080 that's overheating on you. Um, this mod even it, it it was good. I I'm so glad. I mean, it's, I yeah. Anyways, take care. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video, hopefully soon. And hopefully soon we can work on the studio so we don't look at these walls, these messed up walls anymore. And we can make it all pretty and nice and all that. But yeah, all in time. Take care, guys. I'll see you later.